Hello everyone and welcome to video number 26 in our survival game series done by Brackies. I'm the CEO of Brackies and this video is going to be a rather short one. We're going to take a look at uh, preventing weapon clipping. So making it so that our weapon or our arms and, and uh, other stuff attached to our player will not go through objects so they can be seen at any time. And uh, we're also going to be making a few minute tweaks and fixes here and there. So uh, let's open up Unity as always. First of all, I just want to select my player. And under here we have our main camera. And under there we have our arms. Uh, and it's these arms I want to uh, make a separate uh, layer. Uh, then we can have a second camera just render that layer and then we can set it to um, depth only which will mean that uh, they will be rendered no matter what uh, no matter matter what so even though they are inside another object or behind another object we will still be able to see them uh, so that's really cool so what we're gonna do now is uh, we are just gonna take a look at what's inside our arms because everything that are inside of our arms will uh, also be set to this layer uh, and that means whenever we are going to uh, equip weapons to these arms that will also uh, be uh, be rendered by the be rendered by the secondary camera okay cool uh, so what we're going to do now is we are going uh, to select our player hit game object create other and then where we have it there camera and now let's select this to uh, and rename it to something like weapon camera. Um, I'm gonna type draw always. Uh, and then I'm gonna uh, drag that under the main camera and center the position and the rotation. So that's really important you do that, else uh, everything is gonna look pretty weird. Uh, now we go to our clear flags and set this to depth only. And uh, the culling mask is something we're going to play with in a sec. So now we can go ahead and select our arms, go to the layer, hit add layer, call this draw always. Then select our arms again, go up under layer, select our draw always layer hit yes change children and remember you have to do this with all the weapons too so set them to the layer draw always now we go into our main camera to make sure that it won't be drawn by our main camera because we won't don't, won't uh, we don't want to draw this uh, two times so go under the culling mask and this is basically what it's going to draw and by draw I, I of course mean uh, show and then we want to Disable the draw always. So now we see them uh, disabled under the main camera here. So if we were to go ahead and play the game right now, you can see that it's uh, not really working. And it's all, uh, also uh, pretty hard on the computer because we have two cameras drawing uh, both things. Anyway, so now we go under our draw always. And then we want to disable these components because we don't need them. We want them to be handled by our main camera. So just remove component flare layer, GUI layer, and audio listener. Now we want to go under our depth. And we want to change this to something higher than our main camera. To 1. Uh, then we can go under our culling mask. Select nothing and then select the draw always and now it will only draw our hands as we can see here and now it should be working so if we hit play we can see our hands are being drawn and we have no error saying that there are more than one audio listener in the scene they are only being drawn once and uh, if we now run into a post or anything like that we can see that they are not clipping through so we can always see our hands. And this is uh, really something that has been standardized uh, in the industry for a long, long time. Because if we were to disable this camera, 
go on the main camera and put back on the draw always. We can see the arms going through objects. So let's hit this back on main camera and then draw always off. Okay, cool. So now that we had that set up, uh, I'm just going to make a few changes. Uh, the first one I want to make is select our player, select the graphics, and then I want to apply a red color to this so that I can always find our player or any color you might like. So now we go into our materials and I hit create material. I'm going to call this um, maybe we should do a blue actually, so blue. Then select our player graphics. Drag in the blue. And now we can change the main color to blue. And you can really pick uh, whatever color you want. Actually, let's go with the brackies color, so let's change this to purple or lila or yeah let's go with that so that's really girly <laughs> but um that's what we're gonna go with uh for now so that just makes it easier to quickly find our player uh if we view it from a distance uh the last change i want to make is something you have uh, been asking me to do and that's uh, showing how to hide the slider up here if uh, you're done with testing I think it's really nice to have it there whenever you're testing out levels because then you can quickly view them at different points in time. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to show you how to disable it. So if we go on our day night cycle, then under time of day, we have our time of day script. We can go ahead and open that up. And it will load in mono develop. This is taking quite a while, so let's just try this one more time. There we have it. And, uh, oh, these are some uh, scripts I used to uh, make the inventory, which is something we're going to cover in future videos. The next one is probably going to be about mechanism, uh, so look forward to that. Uh, but in the future, uh, we will get to the inventory, I promise. So now under function on GUI, we have the slider equals GUI, horizontal, slider, and so on. This is something you can just go ahead and delete or comment out. So I'm just going to make these two dash signs. And now when we save this, and uh, whoops, we open two instances of Mano developer. There. So when we save this and hit, in, hit play, you can see that it's not being drawn and the uh, time of day will still change. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can change uh, the editor, uh, the script editor. So if you are not interested in using Mono Develop, but would rather use something like Notepad++, this is how you do it. So you, of course you start out by downloading the program. And whenever you have it installed, uh, this is what you do. So you go to Edit, and then you go to Preferences, then you go to external tools, then there you see the external script editor, then we can click on this mono develop and if it's not um, in here you go to browse and then you find the location where you've installed it, I think I installed mine under D, programs, then you find the notepad++, I actually might have installed it under C, program files, Notepad++, there we have it. And then you select the application XC, so we hit open. And now we can see that that is uh, chosen here. So we can go ahead and delete this or, or close this down. And now when we go ahead to open a script, so let's go under the scripts folder. And let's just open up the advanced AI. You can see that's what opens up. So now it opens up in Notepad++. So uh, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I know it was a short one, uh, but this was just a bunch of requests I have gotten for you guys. I just thought I would 
clear up and get out of the way before we continue with um, the mechanism parts. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.